Hey React Native friends, what's up? Simon here from Galaxies.dev back with a little tutorial because I recently discovered how you can easily add widgets to your React Native application. It takes like 10 minutes, it is absolutely mind blowing. It all starts with this great library. It is still a bit experimental, but it's called Expo Apple Targets by Evan Bacon. Warning, highly experimental, but still it works really, really great. However, if you look through all of this, there are a lot of options and things you can do. So I wanna give you the fastest way to build your own widgets. You can also build app clips or share extensions. All of that is, isn't really uh, too much different, but we're gonna do a widget because I think those are actually the coolest things. So. I am here inside a super easy React Native Expo application. I just have a blank template and I generated this file where I have one input and I can save a name. And our goal is to display this saved name in the widget because these kind of shared data between widget and your app is usually what people want. So I've built my own matrix manager. You can check it out on the app store where you have like your task list and your to do's and they are visible within the widget. And that's usually what you see as well, uh, what most people want to do. So let's do this. Uh, you can get started. First of all, I created my app with bun, bunx create expo my widget. That's my app. And now we go ahead with bunx create target widget. I will just directly give widget to uh, this call so it generates the widget. You could also just create target and then you would see all the different options that you have. Now this generates a new targets folder in your project and in there you're going to find a lot of Swift code. Uh, this could be really confusing. So there's an app intent, an expo target file, uh, the actual widget which holds all the Swift code that we need. Um, there's even code for a live activity or widget control. So we don't have to dive into all of these things. We will now focus on getting our data from our app to the widget. So in order to do this, we need to configure a couple of things. Uh, first of all, let's go into the expo tag. That's pretty much like the configuration file of this um, widget. It's called widget. We can keep the icon. That doesn't really matter. Uh, one thing I'd like to do is you can actually also bring in colors like an accent color. So I will add that color in here. You could also add your primary colors. Then under entitlements, we want to add a security group. And you have to use com apple security application groups. And what you want to do then is you actually want to use this from your config iOS entitlements. That makes it a bit easier because if you put a string in here, you're going to have to manage the string in different locations. And eh, that's not always a great idea. Now, on top of that, we're going to have to jump to our app JSON because we, of course, now need to make a pre-build with this target to be included in our app. Do I even have a app JSON? Yeah, I do. So the first thing you want to set up is under iOS, you want to add your Apple team ID. This is required because then EAS can manage the capabilities and all the stuff under the hood. Then we also now need to set up the thing we just supplied here. So config iOS entitlements, that's exactly what we need. So config iOS entitlements and under entitlements, we would have to use the same key. So com Apple security application groups. So we can share the data and I will use a uh, group com, let's call this galaxies dot um, my widget. Doesn't really matter too much. Okay. From this point, uh, that's pretty much everything we need. Let's quickly move into the index file and take a look at the actual code that we have to write um, in order to get this. So the cool thing is that Evan actually created a, or packaged a little extension storage in at Bacon's Apple target. This helps us to share our data between our app and the widget. So once we do, for example, the handle save here, uh, we can now call widget or we will first have to create a widget storage. So let's do widget storage. I usually like to do these things um, in sort of uh, like a hook or somewhere else. So don't do it in your page. I just want to have it in here so you see everything that we need to do. Now you can call widget storage dot set. And I want to set this for the name and I want to use the name. Now, for example, for my matrix management, I had an array of data. So I had to JSON stringify the data. For example, uh, in my case, it looked like this. And then within Swift, you're going to have to parse that. We're going to make it a bit easier by just using a string in here. Keep in mind that we only can save strings here. 
It's now important that you also call extension storage dot reload widget. So that will trigger a reload of your widget with that new information. From here on, we could now build our widget. That's actually all for like the connection of the data and then continue in Xcode. However, there's one thing that's problematic and that's that building our app with Xcode and then a widget preview is really, really slow. Um, so there's one command that comes in really handy. Evan explained this on a stream. So we can do a pre-build and use a template here, which is pretty much like an empty React Native app. So we're not bundling our React Native app in that case. Um, and you're gonna see it's a whole lot faster. Because it's kinda hard to do, run this all the time, I tr like to add this to my package JSON. So you can just add like build widget and that would run this script. Node module, bacon's Apple target pre-built. Uh, in the future, this of course might change. But for the moment, let's call this npm or let's call bun run uh, build widget. And that should be a whole lot faster. So that should make a really quick pre-build um, of our application without the whole React Native app. I mean, this one's pretty small, but still uh, it includes a lot. And then you can open up Xcode with the Z iOS. And we're gonna see that in our app, we have a widget here under my target. And if I hadn't done, if I had just a pre-build, uh, the thing that I do now would be really, really slow. So here's a preview and we can click uh, to reload this. And if we bundle this without React Native, it's usually quite fast. So it, I mean, it still needs to compile somehow and show our data, but it is a whole lot faster. So here we go. Here is my first widget actually. You can see it shows like favorite emoji and the time. And from here on, you have to write Swift code. The cool thing is that the code you see in here, like the app intent, the widget and whatnot, is synced to our project. So I don't have to work in this folder. I can do it better in here because I still feel like Xcode is a bit better in handling Swift. And also, especially if you work on the UI of this widget, um, it, it is just easier to do this right here in Xcode where we have the preview. From this point on, there's a whole lot we could uh, explain about the general app intent and how it works, how you configure the title, the description and the parameters, but then it would probably take us another half an hour in how you can set up different strings and use them in the widget and how in general the widget timeline works. Instead, I just wanna show you the quickest way to get this. So you have this widget entry view somewhere in your code, and this is pretty much which generates the view. This is using Swift UI, it has a text time entry and a text favorite emoji already. You can, if you want to, just remove that uh, and then you're gonna see if you hit save pretty soon your preview will update. Now I also added a function here get username which now uses the user defaults and our once again the suit name and then we try to get the string for the key name. This is the one we used in our application in the index. So we've wrote it for name and now we're trying to load it for name. Otherwise, we're gonna supply no name, which is what you currently see in that preview. So that preview just helps us to, um, well, uh, get the right uh, styling here. By the way, for the text, let's also use our accent color. So I'm gonna change this one here to uh, foreground, uh, or how do we do this? I think you use foreground color, and then we can use dot accent color. And that should hopefully use, yeah, that shows our nice blue color that we set up in our app intent, uh, in the expo target. So really, this library works like magic, really. Um, again, there's a whole lot more we could say about creating the widget, about how you like uh, add settings to it and provide stuff. All of that is Swift. You can just look up the stuff for Swift. You can use AI to generate the things. We've now made this function, which should in theory display our name once we set it. Now, we can't use this app yet because we bundled it without uh, our React Native application. So at this point, you're gonna have to do an actual pre-build. So NPX Expo pre-build platform iOS dash clean to make a complete clean pre-build. Again, don't um, worry that we changed the code in Xcode. That was linked completely to our widget here. So I can now go into my widget file and you're gonna see that right here, 
we still have that information. Evan really built something truly epic and used some magic behind the scenes to make that work. Once we got this, we can run npx expo run iOS. That will compile our application and bring it up in the simulator. And now we just wait a couple of minutes and then we check it out. All right, the app wants to launch. We of course going to open this up. Uh, before we write a name, let's see and let's add a widget. So let's long click here, edit, add widget. And you're gonna have to search for your application. So what's, <laughs> what's the name of my application? I think it's my widget or something. Yeah, here we go. Okay, let's add a widget. We get some examples. We're gonna use the smallest one up here and we see we have no name. Clicking on this should bring us to my application and let's try to add galaxies. We're going to save this and voila, we got it. Okay, I was honestly really excited if this would work out because uh, I just made it in one try and uh, I wasn't sure if this would already be connected or we need to do an EAS build, but it turns out it works incredibly well. We can hit save, it reloads the widget in the background and it sets our data here. So I think this is like the fastest way to create a widget. By the way, down here you can see my own widget. You can cr of course create a whole lot more with uh, Swift. You can create these views. You can attach actions to buttons so it triggers directly a deep link in your application. So check out my matrix manager if you want to see that in action. And I just hope this once again shows you what React Native and Expo is capable of, especially thanks to Evan Bacon. If you want to learn more about the other widget types, the app clip, the share extension, or what you can do, check out his live stream. I will add a link below and don't forget to subscribe here for weekly videos on React Native. And if you want to learn a bit more about some other cool technologies for this year, check out this video about my recommended tech stack for React Native in 2025. I'm pretty sure you're gonna like that as well. So I will catch you in the next one and until then, happy coding, Simon.